Hello, my name is Chris Kiak, and in this video today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the issues that you might face in dealing with clips that are coming in from MBS slide rule into Tecla structures. Now here I've got a GERT coming into a jam, and you can see here that clearly the clip is offset incorrectly here. Um, and in my DT clip file over on the left, I have this ANG204, it's a type V clip, and essentially um, what I've done is I've changed the width here to seven and a half inches, and this is pretty common. So a lot of metal building manufacturers will decrease the width here from eight inches to seven and a half in order to make sure that it fits properly between the profile and doesn't clash with the flanges. Then essentially there's uh, the basically the total combined bent plate length here, um, which is you know three, a three inch and a two inch leg. I've got the thickness, I've got the 90 degree value here, which tells it that's bent. Here's my edge distance and then my gauge on my uh, bolts and then the leg definitions here. And so where is all this uh, map to so you can kind of reference it? Well, if you come in here to the input help details, you'll see here that there's a map for type V clips and then it'll actually tell you essentially what the A, B, C, and D values mean and what the length and the width means. Now, one thing to understand is that um, what I found out is that MBS will hard code uh, the width on this in this particular condition, um, essentially to be or assume that it's eight inches when it's placing this clip in the 3D model into Tecla structures. So even though I've changed these dimensions here um, in my DT clip file um, to a smaller width and, and set everything you know, the way that I would expect it to be on my detail drawings, um, what is happening is that MBS is going to center the bolts or place these bolts. Um, it'll offset the two inches for everything related to the girt. But then when it puts the clip in here, it's assuming that the clip is always a hard-coded eight inches wide or the full width of the member. And that's causing this offset here. So it's reading the seven and a half inch um, length essentially, or the you know overall width of that plate. It's reading this from DT clip, but it's not properly centering the clip on the gauge of the holes. And so that's creating this offset problem that we see here. Now, one thing too is that um, always the clips that are coming in from slide rule, even though you might use an angle profile here, um, Tecla and slide rule are going to always have this bent plate that's being created. And we don't want that. We want an actual angle. So rather than trying to manipulate this connection that came across, I'm going to show you how to just delete this out and actually uh, change this to an angle, as well as change all of the uh, hole offsets and the centering everything correctly here. So that way you get this exactly the way that you want. All right, to get started, what I'll do is I'll just window from left to right around all of the clip, the bolts and holes and everything here. I'm going to delete that out. And I'm just going to do control two here on my keyboard to make sure that there are no residual holes or anything that are in here in the model. And I've completely wiped out what slide rule put in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the applications and components panel on the right hand side of the screen. And I'm going to type in a search here for connection 141. And this is an out of the box uh, Tecla system component that is used for creating clip angle connections. Now, you know, usually you'll see that the image here pretty much reflects and looks like something for a beam to beam connection that you would apply on a mezzanine or a structural framing using like wide flange beams. Now, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to tweak the settings in here to actually work with this particular connection that we see. Now, when I single click on this at the lower left hand corner, Tecla says pick the main part. Well, since I'm in transparent mode, I'm going to click near the edge of this, uh, basically the jam. So that way it's highlighted first and it's the supporting member. So that's the main part. Then Tecla says, pick the secondary part. Well, that's the supported member. So that's going to be basically this girt or this header. So I'm going to click on that. And the first time you apply a connection, it might take a couple seconds uh, to basically do the initial connection. And when we insert this in, you're going to say, well, hey, Chris, that doesn't look anything like what I want. You know, that looks like a lot of overkill. There's a lot of strange copes. There's two clips. It looks pretty beefy. But we're going to actually just modify this um, in order to get it to exactly what we're looking for. Now, whenever you've uh, uh, picked these two members and a connection gets applied, it creates this green cone. So this is just showing you that there is a joint that is here inside of the model. Now, what I can do to edit this is if I just hover over the cone, um, you'll see that the rollover highlight kicks in and I can just then double click on that and it will select the component and then it will also open up its properties. So what I suggest is you just start going methodically through each of the tab pages and get this to the result that you're looking for. Well, the first thing I can see is that this is going to basically the web or the face of the jam there, and I need that to come out actually a little bit. And so what I would do is I might just come in here to the uh, edit tab. I'll just measure this distance. So watch, I'll just say from here 
to a perpendicular. So let's say perpendicular. And that distance is essentially three and seven sixteenths. So what I might do is I'll select on the component and make sure it's highlighted. I'll come in here into the picture tab and then there's this offset here to change the clip dimension back. So I'm gonna just say three and seven sixteenths. And then I'll just say modify. And then it pulls that back. So there we go, we've got our first step done. Now we also have this uh, setback that cuts the end of the uh, girt or the header back away from the face, face of the jam there. And some people will actually zero that out. So if I say zero, then it essentially decreases that and the cut goes away. So now this is flush. Um, or I can put in a quarter inches, which is what uh, defaulted from MBS coming in. Now, I just continue to go through each of these so I can actually go to the next tab where I'm gonna control what's the angle size. Well, this is the case where I don't want a bent plate, I want an actual angle. So I want a three by two inch angle here. So I can do angle three by two by three sixteenths if that's what I was using. And then I can just say modify. And now I'm getting closer. So again, what I suggest doing is that as you continue to go through each of these tab pages and tweak some of the settings, what you wanna do is you wanna modify along the way. Don't go trying to change a whole bunch of settings all at once and then modify, because it'll be hard for you to see exactly what you did or what you changed in the dialog box to get to the results that you're seeing in the model. So methodically go tab by tab, setting by setting, and then get this exactly the way that you want. So I'm just gonna copy this for the near side and the far side. And then the next thing I can see here is that the long leg um, is vertical, but I want it to be horizontal. So these are the uh, settings down here that you switch for that. So I'm just gonna modify this, and then now you can see that this uh, basically adjusts. Now I've got some bolts still going on here that are in the background and we're gonna get rid of that. So we'll solve that here in a second, but we still have two clips and I don't need that. I only need the clip on the bottom. So what I can do for that is essentially this first setting here, will turn one of those off. So let's just select one clip only and there we go. Now it's only on the bottom and I have you know pretty close to what I'm looking for here from the angle size, the orientation point of view. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and go to stiffeners. There's nothing really here because there are no stiffeners. General tab, I might put a connection code in here for my reference. Um, the haunch, again, there should be no haunches created, so I'm gonna turn this off. And then I might even just zero out uh, these values here so that way no haunch plate gets made. It's basically like an extra plate that gets added when copes are happening. We don't want that. Then on the notch tab, there's a couple things. I could probably just zero out these values. Um, or I can just uh, actually switch it to this option here and that will truly get rid of these uh, extra cuts for copes that are happening. And then I'm just gonna turn rounding off here since I don't want any of that. And then, um, you know, really we can just zero out everything and I'm gonna then press modify. So I'm getting, getting closer, all my cuts went away. I just have a nice simple setback. I'm starting to get really close to what I'm looking for here. So then I'm gonna go to the bolts tab and the first thing I'm gonna change is you know, I don't need any bolts on the primary. So the control for that is this option right here. So I see welded and then bolted. And I really want that to actually be swapped around. So let's just kind of look at our list here um, and you know, see what we need to change this to. So I wanna get a bolted on the top and then welded on the leg. So let's see, let's get close to that. Let's see what I'm looking for exactly here. And let's see. I think that is the setting that I want there. So I'll just say modify. There we go, sorry, it just took me a second, I had to look at all the pictures. But um, basically, um, we're getting close to what we want. We have the bolts now in that outstanding leg. We're just doing welds on the top. And now what we need to do is just start controlling like our edge distances. So we want you know one and, one and three quarter here. We have a four inch gauge. And then um, basically we'll just say modify there and you'll see that the clip is starting to update. Now, the clip is actually aligned um, from one face, and so rather than controlling the dimension down um, from the face, we're gonna set this to be controlled and center the clip angle and the bolts in the middle of the member, and I'll just zero out this distance so that way it stays nice and centered. And here we go. We have a green cone. We have a clip that's the correct length. Um, it is an actual angle now. We've got our bolts that are coming in here. Now the bolts look a little bit too big, and so what we'll do is we're just gonna switch this to half inch bolts, and these may be A307 or A325, depending on your design, and then you'll just say modify, and there we go. Now the next thing is, you know, do we want oversized holes on any of the parts, like in the angles or in the uh, girt themselves? So you can control that here. So you could switch this from slotted to oversized, and then if you wanted like a slightly oversized hole, 
um, and you can decide whether that's going to be inside of the uh, the beam or the girt itself or in the angles or if you want oversized holes in both for tolerance point of view but here we could actually come in here type one eighth of an inch modify and then we can specify that let's say for instance we want it uh, to be in the angles so i'll modify there and then only the oversized hole is going to be in the angle and the clip itself whereas regular holes will be um, in the punch pattern for the girt okay so there you go this is kind of showing you how you can essentially take one of these tecla out of the box system components and you can just tweak some of the settings that you have here to get this to accomplish the standard clip that you want now, what I'm going to do is, you know, I, I don't want to re-enter this information at every single connection joint. I want to use these as a starting point. So I might just come in here and I might say, you know, header to jam or something like that, or a girt to jam um, in my save as settings up here at the top. And then what I'll do is I'll just say save as. So that way I can use those settings at any time. So I can come back here and load up girt to jam or header to jam in whatever settings that I save away. Now these settings, when you do create them and you save them away, they're going inside of your model folder. So I'm gonna open up the model folder. Here's my attributes folder. And if I do uh, sort by date modified at the top, there's that header to jam.j141. You'll just copy that file over into your MBS firm folder. And now these saved settings that you filled out can be used on all future jobs based on your standards. So there you go, save your settings away. But how do we use these for the rest of the connections here in this particular job or this model? Well, what I'll do is I'll press apply and okay. And then what I can do is I can um, go to the other locations and you can see I've already applied one over here, but let's go to this other side, um, you know, where I have this kind of similar condition and let's see if we can just use these on the other side. So I'll just window around these and I wanna make sure I don't get rid of my standard hole patterns there. So I'll delete those. I'll just activate the component and I can just single click on this because what I did is I actually applied the setting. So when you press apply on the dialog box, that uses your last input settings here for the next new components that you're gonna create. So apply and okay. I'm gonna just single click to activate the component. Tecla says pick the main part at the lower left-hand corner. I'm gonna pick my uh, my jam here, then I'll pick my girt, pick my jam, then I'll pick my girt, and then there we go. We now have that input. Now what we can see is that the clip's actually reversed. So there's a couple things that we can do to change or modify that. Um, the simplest thing is to actually just double click on these. Um, so I'm holding down control so that way I've got both of them. So watch this, it's a little bit of trick. I went too fast, but let's say I click on this one and I wanna open the properties of this one and select this second one at the same time while keeping my first one selected. Well, I'm gonna hold down control. I'll double click on this one. It opens up the dialog box, but now both of these components are selected. So you can actually modify these components at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come in here to the parts tab and I'm gonna switch this from the far side and I'm gonna switch this here um, in my dialog box to switch the clip angle side and I'll say modify and then you'll see that the clips are now on the bottom. So that's one easy way to just essentially use the system component and reverse the direction and you can modify them both at the same time. Now, one other thing that I see here is that uh, I probably need to tweak the welds a little bit on this. And so the last thing I'll do there is I'll come up to the welds button within the dialog box. You can look at the picture here and see which weld corresponds appropriately to the setting that you're trying to control. And so, you know, I can see that I've got a quarter inch weld here and that's going to be probably weld number, uh, we'll see, weld number two. So I might come in here and say one eighth or three sixteenths. It needs to be pretty small since we're going to the cold form. And then I'll just say modify on that component looks like i might still have a couple other welds that i need to change so let's see i've got the quarter inches there all right and because of uh i've reversed the kind of welding on the clip i'm actually looking at the wrong one with that so let's switch this to one eighth and then i'll just say modify and then when i select on the component you'll see that it now has the eighth inch there so again you can set these settings up apply and okay apply and okay and then apply these throughout the rest of the model and then you can just save these settings away up here at the top with your save as and put these into your firm folder now once you've applied connections one thing that's really a good practice to do is inquire on the assembly um, to make sure that you set the correct uh, site versus shop settings for your bolts and your welds. So watch, I'm gonna select on this, I'm gonna say inquire assembly. And here we go, we actually have something that I missed. So I have my jam is orange, which means it's the main part of the assembly. But then my girt here is actually turning yellow, which means that it's shop attaching to that jam and we don't want that. These need to be basically field bolts. 
Now, let me just go see if I did this actually um, in these other cases as well. So if I say inquire assembly, we can see that um, both of these are also incorrect. Now, you saw me change the setting um, over on these two connections to reverse the clip angle side. But I wanna modify um, basically that uh, shop bolt um, setting on all of these components at the same time. So this is a 141 connection, this is a 141 connection. And if I uh, hold down control, double click, it's gonna open up this other 141 connection. So we have slightly different settings between all three of these connections. Now, here's where you use something that's extremely useful at the bottom called the uncheck or check all checkboxes. So down here at the bottom of the dialog box, so I'm just twirling my mouse around so you can see it, there's this button and when you press it, it will uncheck all the checkboxes next to the fields. A lot of new users in Tecla think that these are like on off switches just overall for this particular setting. And that's not true. What these mostly are for is for turning off whether or not this particular field will be affected or looked at during a modify. So if this is unchecked, then it will be ignored when I do a modify by pressing the modify button. This is a really handy way to ignore uh, multiple components being selected and ignore certain settings that are different between them and only change a specific setting. So I'm gonna go back to the bolts tab and the specific setting that I need to change is that here I need to switch this from site to workshop because we had changed this from a uh, bolted welded connection um, on the primary and secondary and we kind of we tweaked that around by changing this setting here. So we need to switch this to workshop. And then we could set this to site if we needed to, but again, there's no bolts here, so this isn't gonna modify anything. This was the key thing that we needed uh, to switch here. So let's switch this back to site. We'll say modify. And when I uh, press modify here, you'll notice that only these two checkboxes where I've actually made some changes are now going to be impacted. And I can tell that these have switched to bolt, uh, field bolts because um, these are now a different color. And if I actually double clicked on these, you'll see that they are here inside the dialog box as site. And to double check and confirm that everything worked correctly, I'm going to now select on this, right click, inquire assembly, and we'll see that now the GERT is just its standalone assembly. And then if I inquire the assembly here, we should see that the clip is going to be shop welded and it turns a little bit of a yellow. It's hard to see through the GERT there, but it's a bright yellow and it's shop attached to the jam. All right, so again, I've modified all three of these components, but I did not change uh, the clip angle side um, because I had unchecked all my checkboxes and the clip angle side um, variable here is unchecked, so it was not affected during the modify. For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.